We are with the president of Sugiara Week. Uh, Sugiara Week is an important event in Lithuania to remember uh, the, the deeds of the Japanese uh, diplomat uh, Sugiara, uh, who lived in Kaunas uh, between uh, 1949 and 1940, and uh, he saved uh, thousands of Jews uh, by the persecution uh, of the Nazism. Can you tell me uh, what does uh, uh, it mean, uh, this event, for Lithuania and, uh, in particular, uh, for Kaunas? Yeah, actually, I'm really glad that uh, Sugihara was living in Kaunas because for our city it's really a very important story. I would say that what, that's one of the most important stories in the 20th century for us uh, because the Japanese consulate was established 80 years ago, actually, exactly 80 years ago in Kaunas. And uh, Sugihara was living here in Kaunas for one, one year, exactly, and during this very, very short period he was saving Jewish lives. And in total, it is said that he saved around 6,000 Jews, uh, uh, who, who actually escaped from Poland, from Nazi Germany, to Lithuania, and finally they could find, like, uh, uh, there are new countries, there are new uh, homelands in, in America, in different, different parts of the world. So for us it's really a very important story and for Japanese people I would say also that Sugihara is one of the most important heroes of 20th century. And of course, like Sugihara, uh, it is the main link, it is the main connection between our nations, between Lithuania and Japan. And for us it's really very much important actually to keep this connection thanks to Sugihara. And thanks to Sugihara, we have really different relationships developing between these two countries, like, you know, Lithuania and Japan. We have, like, tourism, which is, like, you know, increasing every year, except of this year. <laughs> and, of course, we have, like, you know, different cultural exchanges, we have um, educational exchanges, we have, like, you know, uh, even business exchanges are starting thanks to, like, you know, to Sugihara, to the history of Sugihara. Uh, Sugiara Week uh, will be in uh, next October. Uh, is, is already there uh, a, a program mm -hmm. and uh, uh, where uh, there will be the event in uh, Kaunas, in different uh, cities in Lithuania? Yeah, because it's really important to understand that that story of Sugihara, it happened like 80 years ago. That's already a memory. And there are not so many people who are like you know who could remember that story, right? So that's very important actually to make this memory alive. And I'm very very happy that this memory is made through the different like you know places in Kaunas that are related to Sugihara, like you know uh, commemorative plates and Sugihara Museum and different other actually places. But also for us, for our team, for Kaunas Japan Friendship Association, it's really very, very important actually to make this story alive. It's not like, you know, to be, it shouldn't be like uh, included only in the museums actually, but it should be alive. That's why actually Sugihara Week uh, uh, became uh, actually a very important event for us. Uh, the first Sugihara Week was organized in uh, uh, 2017 and this year we are trying to organize the third Sugihara Week. And of course uh, the main idea actually is to connect the nations, to connect such nations like Japan, Lithuania, Israel and also other nations that are interrelated into this story. And uh, we have different cross, like, you know, cross-cultural, or we say, international events, actually. Of course, uh, we had really b very big plans for this Sugihara Week, because actually at least two delegations from Japan, like two big charter flights, they were planned actually to come to, to, to Lithuania just for Sugihara Week, but of course they were cancelled, unfortunately. But still, we are very optimistic and we are trying to organize uh, many cultural events actually so there will be like symposiums there will be academic events there will, will be concerts there will be exhibitions and they will be happening uh, like you know taking part in all like you know the spaces of Kaunas. Uh, it will be like the festival which will take part like for one week uh, starting from monday to sunday actually and we are counting now, uh, now, for this time being, we are counting around 30 different events happening in different spaces of Kaunas. 
So I think that like the citizens of Kaunas, they, they will be able to, you know, to understand the story and to enjoy also Japanese culture, Jewish culture actually, and to understand better all the things. Uh, also a very new thing for, for this year is actually that uh, this year we are also organizing not only in Kaunas, which is actually a kind of epicenter of the story, but also we are very happy that different communities in Lithuania, uh, in different cities, in different towns, they are also jo joining this initi initiative. So we will have some events in Vilnius, we will have some events in Telshe or Tituvenai or Driskininkai, like, 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 you know, countryside already of Lithuania. And we are very happy actually that the, the festival, the idea is expanding. We are at uh, Shriha House in Konas with uh, its uh, director and uh, if you can tell us about the museum and the history of the foundation, uh, what's happened and uh, what uh, want uh, to, to do with this uh, foundation. Uh, Sugihara Foundation Diplomats for Life was established in uh, 1999, uh, 14th of uh, December. And uh, the museum was opened just a few months later because uh, the house, what we are, have today, and there is a Sugihara house as a museum, it was a, a communal house. So you were talking about the Soviet period after the 1940 when Soviet invaded our country, they nationalized all the private houses. And uh, a lot of people were deported to Siberia, especially intellectuals and uh, businessmen, soldiers, uh, officers. Uh, so uh, the previous owner of the house was uh, Mr. Tom Kunas. He was uh, a minister of education in 1930s. So when the Soviets came to Lithuania, they started to deportate all that politicals, uh, politics uh, and, and other people. So Tom Kunas was deported to Siberia with the family. The house was taken by the Soviet government and there was a lot of families who lived together in uh, one flat. So, for example, three or four families were lived in the one flat. They used one bathroom, one kitchen and so on. Just uh, after 1990s, when Lithuania had independence again and uh, uh, the house was given back for the family of Tom Kunas. So in that time, uh, it was a very hard time for Lithuania. After few, it was a few years after independence, and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, businessman, Mr. Fredy of Sommer, he came to Lithuania from Belgium to uh, make a free economic zone in, in Kaunas. And he knows the story about Sugiha because he is a friend of youngest son of Sugihara, Nobuki Sugihara. So he knows the story about Sugihara, he came to Kaunas and he started to find a way how to open the museum and uh, he has no uh, good answer from government, from municipality, nobody knows about that and so there was just different year. <laughs> And uh, he found a few private people, personal people, who uh, decided that they need to do something to remember Sugihara and to remember Kaunas in that time. So uh, there was a Mr. Ramunas Garbaravichus, he was a co-founder of Sugihara Foundation, he, he is a businessman. And Mr. Egidius Alexandrovich is professor of history from Vitotas Magnus University. So these three young men, uh, they decided to open the Sugihara to to to, to make the uh, to uh, uh, open the Sugihara Museum in that time. So. Uh, Ramunas Garbaravich, he bought the house from the previous owner. And uh, we started as a Sugihara Museum in the beginning of 2000. Uh, but there was uh, very few visitors in that time. So, uh, especially in Japan, uh, Sugihara name was not very uh, known in that time. So maybe 
in Rio, uh, Sugihara's uh, Japanese government, they uh, started to promote Sugihara just in the middle of 1990s. There was uh, some uh, documentary, <coughs> later it was uh, done uh, some uh, drama movie, and year by year the Sugihara names grows up and, and, and it started to a little bit famous. So, but in the first time when we, we opened the museum there was just a uh, few visitors. In a year we have maybe 1,000, maybe more visitors. And uh, now, uh, I mean uh, just uh, time before pandemia, 2019, we, we have uh, close to 20,000 visitors in a year. And a lot of Japanese tourists are coming here from Japan. And now this year uh, there is uh, the Sumihara week in October, next October. Yeah, uh, we planning. In Rio, all this year, uh, Lithuanian government, uh, parliament, they pronounced the year of Sugihara, 2020. Because uh, there is a uh, 120 years when uh, Sugihara was born and uh, 60 years, sorry, 80 years from, I mean, 1940 and 2020, it is uh, 80 years when Sugihara issued visas. So, Parliament pronounced the year of Sugihara and we had, a, a, we plan, we, we have on a plan a lot of uh, different uh, uh, concerts, uh, seminars, uh, conferences here, but sorry, pandemia stops it and uh, we, are ho we hope that uh, in the middle of October we will have Sugihara week. And we will have also the monument of Sugihara in the center of the city, close to that uh, hotel when Sugihara lived uh, a couple of weeks before he ran the house, this house, for the consulate. And he, when he left the house, when Soviets invaded Lithuania and Soviet uh, government, they closed all the consulates. Sugihara closed the consulate and he moved to the same hotel for one week uh, before his uh, trip to, uh, to, to Berlin. Linas is a historian of the museum and the Sugihara House. Uh, can you tell me about uh, the situation in Lithuania at the time, in 1949 and 1940? Oh, till the uh, summer of 1940, Lithuania was still independent neutral country, surrounded by two uh, totalitarian regimes, Nazi Germany from the west and the uh, Soviet Union from the east. And it was a, a safe place, a harbor for refugees, primarily from uh, Poland, divided and occupied again by the Nazis and by the Soviets. So till the summer of 1940, a lot of refugees came here into Lithuania and were living here. But at that period, uh, June 15, 1940, Lithuania started to uh, be occupied by the USSR. And it was a big question for the refugees where to go and uh, which, which direction to take. And in the summer of 1940s, Junya Sukihara, Japanese consul here, and Jans Wanter, the Dutch honorary consul in Kaunas, became very instrumental because Sukihara was issued transit visas as if uh, to go through Japan, and Jans Wanterdijk was uh, giving final destination visas or the inscription in the documents that uh, separate visa to former or at that time uh, Netherlands colonies in Suriname and Curaçao is not needed. So, from the technical or bureaucratic point of view, everything was okay. Going through uh, Japan as if to, uh, to Kurosawa, so Suihara and then Monon, Zwanterdijk less known, and it was the use of Trans-Siberian ra Railroad at that period, meaning going through uh, territory of USSR. Before that, there were also some kind of uh, movement of refugees because they were say searching for some possibilities to emigrate for, I would say, ideological reason, maybe half or, or, or percentage of them because they were nationalistic Jews or Jews Zionists, so they were attempting to go to the Palestine. And before Mussolini uh, get closer to uh, Hitler, uh, by, by the way, Italian ports and uh, Italian or private uh, companies, shipping companies were also used. So they were going by boat, for example, from Odessa to San Trieste or some other ports, Italian ports, and using this way of, of escape. But as I said, as Western borders became more and more closed, 
uh, and Nazis invaded and then the Netherlands and then and, and, uh, France in, in, at the beginning of summer of 1940, in the spring of 1940. So it was much more difficult to go through western direction using, let's say, Italian ports as, as a mean of uh, emigration or migration. So that's why Transiberian Railroad became very important. And Sepihara was instrumental in this point. In your opinion, in the, uh, why uh, did the Mr. Suiaria start uh, taking care uh, of uh, war refugees and uh, in particular of Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question and actually I do not have the clear answer why he was doing so. Maybe several, several remarks here. First of all, that after the Evian conference in 1938, uh, before the war started, the world became very closed and a lot of restrictions, quotas and uh, limited emigration, migration in general was, 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 was the point. And some of the Haren's wanted to decide that they would take the chance, the opportunity. On the hand, uh, on, the hand. on the other hand, uh, at least one of the researchers, Gilles Levin, is saying or giving the portrait of Sukihara that he was a uh, life-cherishing per person. So he uh, thought that uh, life should be enjoyed, life should be cherished, and those who are in, in, in a danger and some difficult uh, situation should be helped in order to, well, to change something. It is said in some testimonies by, the, by those who received Tsukihara so granted like visas that actually giving these visas for life now, if the documents are called like that, usually they were saying that, well, I, Tsukihara was saying in, in, in this very building, I am doing what it is, uh, what, what I can do at the moment, but I could not guarantee you that you will be successful in your journey. I wish you all the best, all the luck. I am doing what I can in the very moment, in, the, in, this, in this situation, but this is not what I, how, how, how to say, uh, my visa won't open you all the gates, but I am doing what, what, what I, I can at the moment. Uh, on the other hand, Tsukihara, as a professional intelligence service uh, or intelligence officer, also he must uh, knew what is happening with the Jews in, in, in uh, Nazi Germany and well, it's dis disputable whether Tsukihara knew some secret German plans that they would attack USSR. At the same time, he understood and well, or in general, he was against some kind of uh, xenophobic attitude and discrimination because when he started his diplomatic career, he was an officer in Manchukuo, in this puppet uh, Japanese Republic uh, created in the territories of, of, of uh, China, and he resigned from this position because he was not satisfied with the Japanese officials' treatment of local population, starting from the same. Uh, Chinese and Jewish minorities, some other minorities, he was against any kind of discrimination. And he definitely knew that totalitarian Soviet regime would close churches, would close synagogues, would not cherish national uh, identities, variety of national identities, because, because according to Soviet ideology, the only identity was the Soviet people, the Soviet person. So you could not live as a Soviet uh, citizen and say, I am in love or I am in love with the idea of restoration of uh, Jewish. Uh, State or something like that. So it's a little bit mysterious thing, but nevertheless, and Zwanterdijk and, and Sukihara in these circumstances acted a little bit different. That's the fact. And motivation is different, different motivation. It's in a larger perspective, Holocaust, the rescue, or so righteous among the nations perspective. Usually, some people are ask the question why, and different, different uh, replies because of the religion, because of the humanitarian ideas. But no one is, is, is giving the clear answer because I was a brave person or something like that. It still, it's the mysterious of human nature and the, of the ideas behind it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.